Hi there, and welcome to Behind Closed Doors. Today we're going to be painting a Caradron Overlord, an Arcanaut to be specific. The model's all primed in Chaos Black, ready to go, and we're going to be starting with a dry brush of Gehenna's Gold over the whole model. I guess the idea with this colour scheme is to find something that, you know, you can apply over a whole bunch of models. Finding the balance between making something look good, and something you can paint over 30, 40 models, more, a hundred maybe, who knows. There's no point, you know, turning up to a battle and only two of your miniatures are painted because the colour scheme you've gone for is, is way too complicated. I mean, that's no good. So you always want to try and be thinking about that with colour schemes if you're going for painting an entire army. So we just do the dry brush over the whole model there. And now that's done, we're going to start bringing in the other colours. First with Cyberite Green. This is one of my favorite colors. I always try and use this in things. It's just such a cool color. It doesn't always work in the fantasy setting just because of the nature of the tone of the color. But uh, I think it works for these Arcanauts because we're kind of going for this nautical kind of diver theme with a bronze and a kind of green together. It's really important to have inspiration when you're coming up with color schemes. I was inspired by a bunch of steampunky things here, not just other miniatures, but uh, also the video game series Thief and Bioshock, and even a bit of Dr. Ned from Borderlands. In fact, that was the first thing I searched for when I was thinking about what kind of green I wanted for the pressure suits for these guys. The gold is interesting as well once you start to put these base coats over because it gives a bit of a shine through the paint if you use your paint quite thin. And it's also sort of like a zenithal highlight in the way it shows us all of the detail. So that can help during the painting as well. Plus, also, I mean it's saving time, which is probably the most important, so never forget that. We're gonna paint all the leather bits, boots, pouches, and that stuff, Rhinox hide. We're pretty much just blocking in all the base colors at this stage. I like to get all the base colors across the whole model down first, and then neaten them up. And from there, you can go to town if you want to, or you can just use it as is. We're gonna just keep going here until all the Rhinox hide is done. And now, they're our primary colors. I think it's always good to keep the color palette quite limited when it comes to painting miniatures. I think it just makes them look more spectacular on the tabletop and makes the army pop a bit more. Nice uniformity, you know? So we've got the three main colors. We've got the gold, we've got the brown, We've got the green, and now we're gonna go through and paint some silver bits with lead belcher, just to break up the color of the gold a touch, because otherwise it can look a bit much once the miniature is done. But you still wanna kind of keep this primary gold over most of the metal because that's our main color here. And we wanna have this nice kind of bronzy effect afterwards with that. So we're gonna be sparing with the silver bits we paint, just the ax and a few other bits and pieces there, just to break up the color a little bit. Now that's done, we're gonna wash the whole model with null and oil. Basically, this is gonna mute the colors a little bit and also tie everything together tonally and just really neaten everything up. So just liberally apply this. And as with all washes, just make sure you move any bits around with your brush that are causing surface pooling. We don't want any of that. I do find sometimes that null and oil can be quite thin, so you may very well wanna do two coats with this. Uh, depending on your penchant for black lining, I love it, so I do tend to go quite heavy with the null and oil. Once that's all dry, we're going to go through and we're going to do our first... Essentially, this is the first level of highlighting, even though we're using the same base colour of Cyberite Green, because we're going to be leaving the null and oil around all the cracks and edges and have it kind of blend up a little bit by being a bit more sparing with this reapplication of the base colours. This is also going to just bring the colour of them up a little bit because we did lose a bit with the null and oil. Now don't forget to make sure your paints are nice and thin for this stage because you do want to be leaving the darkened underlayer of Cyberite Green showing in some areas, so you don't want to be obscuring that work with some heavy paints. Doing the same here for all the leather bits with Rhinox Hide. 
You can also use this stage to fix up any mistakes or details you may have missed in your base coats, something that can definitely happen if you're batch painting. It's time to work on that bronzy brassy effect. And this is very straightforward, we're just blending silver with gold. The first coat we put down, we still want it to be mainly gold though. So just a little bit of lead belcher in there, and you want to kind of alternate between painting and doing a bit of light dry brushing with these metal areas, just so it's not too streaky. Now we're using the 50-50 mix of Gehenna's Gold and Lead Belcher. And like in the previous step, you don't have to be too neat here. I find a little bit of messiness and dry brushing can sometimes help with the look of metallics. You want to essentially be giving the metal a burnished look. If the paint's too thick or neat, it will lose that effect. Keep going, concentrating on the raised areas until you're happy with the level of blending and the metallic effect there on the armour. Let's give the model some life and paint the eyes. You could paint these any colour really. I'm going for a blue with a subtle glow effect, but you could do red. I think yellow could actually look pretty cool with these colours. So we're going to start with some Corax white for the base. And the reason we're starting with white is because the blue is going to be a glaze over the top of this. For the glaze, I'm mixing Ariman Blue with Lamian Medium. And this first one I did is too light, so I've gone for more of a 50-50 mix with the second coat. This was just a bit of experimentation on my part. I don't normally do eyes this way, but I thought I'd try something out. It's always good to do something new. And you don't need to be too neat with this glaze. The small spill around the eye will just add to that glow effect. Once that's dry, we're just going to add a bit of the famous known oil to give it some depth and finish off that glow effect. There we are. Now that's all done, I mean, you can pretty much, you can pretty much use this on the table now, I reckon. This is like battle ready, as the saying goes. But now, from this point onwards, once everything's at this level, we can start to build up the highlights. And we're starting here on the pressure suit with a 50-50 mix of Cyberite Green and Gorse Blaster Green. And we aren't going to go too crazy here, just where the light would be hitting on the large folds, etc. Because we don't want to change the, the, the tone too much from the original Cyberite Green. And you can do this however much you want to. Building highlights is a personal choice on a lot of models. How far you want to go, you know. If you want to do just like one subtle edge highlight over this, that would look good as well, honestly. I like to do a few levels just to blend it in a bit more. You can definitely go too far sometimes with highlights and have this end result which looks a bit faded, a bit washed out. It's just about finding the balance. Although in saying that, sometimes that effect can be exactly what you're going for. Say you're painting some undead, so it's always good to know. The extreme highlights are going to get a pure gorse blaster green. If you get the lines on any of these edges too thick, you can fix it up with the 50-50 mix from the previous step that's sitting nicely on your wet palette. If you want to go even further after this, you can mix up a bit of white with the gorse blaster green for those ultra extreme highlights, but I don't think that's too necessary on a gaming model. Going to give the leather a bit of a treatment now. We're mixing Rhinox Hide with Ushabti Bone for the highlights. I find a bone style colour works nicely to give the leather a bit of a, a faded out, distressed look, as opposed to something like white. You want this to be subtle though, just a spot of a bone with your Rhinox Hide to start because this can get out of control fast. We're really going for just a shade or two up from the Rhinox Hide so we don't lose too much of that rich colour. Using a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and Ushabti Bone, we're going to do the final highlights. And these measurements I give, they're just approximates. You want to learn to know what's right with your eye when mixing paints. And there's nothing wrong with adjusting the mix if it doesn't look right after you start applying paint. You have all your previous shades there, if you need to fix anything up, it's real easy. These highlights are quite stark as well remember, so try not to go overboard. Finally, we're going to do an edge highlight on all the metal with Ironbreaker. This is a nice way to complete the bronzy brassy style effect we're going for. And as with all final highlights, 
just stick to the extreme raised areas, particularly around the face. We don't want this metal to start looking too silver at this stage and undo all our hard work. And with that, he's done. Now that he's based, this Arkanaut is ready to join his company. Off he goes, in search of gold, most probably. I really enjoyed painting this miniature. I'm quite a big fan of uh, some of these newer Age of Sigma models that GW has done, and the direction that they're heading in. And I hope that, uh, you know, you were inspired in some way by watching this video, or perhaps picked up a few new techniques to use on your own armies. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.